Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite Podcast. My name is Terry White and today is the day. That's right, today Lightroom 4 ships. If you've been playing with the public beta, thank you for helping us test it. We actually, through your help, found over 800 bugs that were fixed from the public beta to the shipping version. And of course, the team likes to throw in a few little new things along the way for the shipping version. And I'm going to show you one of those new things today. As you know, or as I've said in the past, I'm a geotag fanatic. I just find it fascinating to geotag my photos so I can look back one day and say, I was standing right there when I took that photo on a map. So, one of the new things we added was reverse lookup. So I'm going to show you how that works, and we're also going to take a look at a feature that's in the map module uh, that I talked about in my last video, but I didn't actually get a chance to show, and that is using a GPX log file. So let's take a look. First thing we need to do is get some photos in. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the import button. And let's go out of this hard drive and into my other hard drive where my demo files are. And there are the ones for Lightroom 4. And we're just going to go ahead and double click. And we want the raw files. There we are. So now, these files are already on my hard drive. I don't need to copy them. I don't need to convert them. They're already in DNG, so I'm just going to add them to this existing catalog. No other work has been done on these pictures. I haven't had time to go through and make any adjustments whatsoever. So as you can see, they come in basically with no tags, no keywords, no nothing. Just basically uh, the images right from DNG um, right into Lightroom 4. So the next thing we're going to do is I would love to map these photos. So I'm going to head over to the map module. And as I walked around in Gothenburg, I was actually using my iPhone. And there was an app that I bought called Geotag Photos Pro. And what this app does is you, turn, you start it out, you set your camera to the same time and time zone as your, as your phone. And as you start out or start a log, it just keeps track of you everywhere you go every time you change position until you tell it to stop. Then you get what's called a .gpx file that you can send to yourself or upload. And once you get that file, you can actually import it right into Lightroom. So let's do that first. Let's go ahead and uh, go down here to the menu option down at the bottom here. And we're just going to say load track log. And when we say load track log, I just go out to my hard drive, found the, or find the gothenburg.gpx file. And we'll just go ahead and load it in. So as you can see, that's actually this blue highlight here, or this blue line, is where we walked. My buddy um, uh, Eric and I walked around. He took me around the city, showed me some highlights, and of course, I took pictures along the way. So we've got the track log loaded. The next thing we need to do is, I'm going to go ahead and select my photos, but we need to make sure that the time zone offset is set, because I took these over in, in Europe. I'm back in the United States. There's a time zone offset difference. We don't want to confuse things. So we're going to go ahead and set the time zone offset. And I know it's about a six hour difference. So as soon as I hit six hours, uh, there we go. It's in sync with what's going on. So the track log started at 3.01 p.m., ended at 4.05. The photos go from 3.03 to 4.01. So pretty much after I turned it on, I snapped the photo. And right before, of course, I turned it off, I snapped my last photo. So now that we've got the offset set, the next thing we'll do, and by the way, you don't need to do that offset if you're still in the same time zone. I only did that because now I'm no longer in the same time zone. So the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and auto tag 48 photos. Now, here is the new feature. You, because of privacy concerns, you basically turn this on if you want it or not, and this is enable reverse geocoding. So that means not only will it add the longitude, latitude, and location of where I was when I took the photos, but it will actually look up that information on, on the Internet and bring down, well, let's see. We'll enable it, and we'll go ahead and click OK. And all my photos, as you can see, were put on the map. But now if I select one of those photos, and you can see over here in the right-hand panel, that not only did it bring in the GPS coordinates, but it looked up the rest of the information, the sublocation, the city, the state, the province, the country, and the country code. That's what that reverse lookup means. So, very cool that I didn't have to have a GPS attachment to my camera. I do have one for my camera, 
that I love and use all the time, but in those situations where I have a camera that doesn't have the ability to have a uh, GPS attached to it, or I'm using a point and shoot or something else, I can use that app on my phone and get the same results or very close using this feature. So as we can see, as I hover over each little flag here, it shows me the picture where I was in that location, the picture I took in that location. And of course we made our Starbucks run in the Grand uh, uh, Central Station there. And <laughs> yep, there's Central Station right there on the map. So it is correct. That's where we were when we took this photo. So very cool feature, very nice to have the shipping version of Lightroom uh, for with all kinds of new capabilities and a new lower price. So check it out at adobe.com. And again, we'll be back for more with future episodes of the Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.